Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to In the Kitchen with the Pastor's Pantry. We promised some of you yesterday that this morning we were going to make biscuits and gravy. Several of you said you wanted to uh, watch us do that. So uh, we're going to get started. We're going to let a couple people get online. I'll kind of talk to you a little bit about what we're doing. Uh, but several of you say uh, you, you struggle doing biscuits and gravy, so we're going to teach you the perfect way to make Southern style buttermilk biscuits. That's what we're going to do, and some great brown gravy. Morning. I'm going to try and not oh. yell today, so hopefully you can yell. hear me. <laughs> so if, if I talk at this level, can you all hear me? Just say yes. I think you can hear me. Uh, the camera is a little bit further away, though, today. Because we got a lot so, going on. I'll, I'll move it up. You turn that up. All right, so. All right, so here's what's going on right now. Joyce is scalding some milk for us uh, in the back for our gravy. Okay, and I'll tell you why that's important here in a little bit. That just got done. And she's also browning up um, two pounds of sausage. We're making a double bag. I'm going away on a retreat this week with uh, some pastors and, and friends, and we're going to do some hiking, and we're doing some of the breakfast food, and other people bringing food. Uh, but one of, the, one of the things we're doing is biscuits and gravy and homemade granola. We've already got the granola made, but we're going to go ahead and get going um, with the biscuits and gravy this morning. Uh, we leave tomorrow afternoon to go on this trip, and so uh, I want to get those made as fresh as possible. So uh, if you're watching this morning, take a moment. We have, and say, I can't see. Say hi. Yeah, we can't see who's. Yeah, so bring, just bring it closer. Okay, we're good. six people. Six people. So we're going we're gonna to try to move you all a little bit closer. Woo, that's close. That's much. At least now I can read it. I know. So, and we'll turn the camera down and let you see. We we try to put it back there so you can see everything. But then we going. can't see what you're saying. Yeah, you're too far away from us. So, uh, so anyway, we're gonna get started with biscuits gravy. Again, Joyce is browning uh, some two pounds of sausage. You want to brown that, and you want to take it off the pan. Use a slotted spoon. Take it out of the pan, set it aside, uh, and leave the fat behind. And to that, the sausage fat, we're gonna add. Um, hey, Rick, uh, we're gonna add some. Uh, uh, some butter for some extra fat. Hey, I hope you and your lovely wife will come to church tomorrow. There'd be, uh, we'd love to see you tomorrow. Uh, i got a great sermon to close out my sermon series. I hope you'll be there. Um, but good to have you all with us. Hi, Angie. Good to have you watching with us as well. So, again, biscuits, biscuits and gravy. Biscuits and gravy is the story of the day. Uh, so, I want to get started. i got to put eight cups of all purpose flour in here. So, and I just sort of just level that off with my finger. It's not an exact science. It's mostly by feel for me is what I do. Um, you just, I just sort of know what, you know what works right. And uh, this is a double batch, by the way. If you go out to my website, that's three, we're on this track account. Um, there's four. Uh, we have this recipe, and it's four cups. There's five. Six. seven, and eight. And I'll need some more for dusting and things like that, okay? So I'm gonna keep that handy. So I have my dry ingredients. Joyce is gonna turn this down so you can see what I'm doing now, okay? My hands are kind of floury, all right? Well, you're not ready yet, it's just flour. Well, but uh, okay, so I'll, now. I'll get you there. <laughs> ain't ready okay. Yet. They don't wanna do um, I do, I do need a tablespoon. Really? Yeah. You sure? No. She's already, she was already getting it. She was ahead of me. As always, she knows what's going on. So um, I need uh, five tablespoons of baking powder and a little bit more. About another teaspoon. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and about a teaspoon more. Okay? Got that in. Mm, well, Angie, so hopefully I'll show you how to make the perfect brown gravy this morning. Quit using the jar. This you're gonna love this. Okay. So I've got that in there. I need about a teaspoon of baking soda. Okay, got that in there. A tablespoon of salt. When you start mixing all the. Uh... Okay. Show them what it looks like. All right, so I got a tablespoon of salt, and now we need to add our butter and shortening. So I've got all the dry ingredients in there, so she's gonna turn it down here so you can see. So all my dry ingredients are in, so I just sort of just get in here with my hands. You can whisk this if you want. That's okay too. I just sort of get in here with my hands and make it happen. Now on my recipe, 
online, it says that you need uh, four uh, or eight tablespoons of uh, butter or no shortening. But I, you can also use butter, and I use both. All right. So what we have is we have uh, since this is double batch, okay, we have eight tablespoons of shortening. Can y'all hear me okay? Is our volume all right? We're trying not to yell. We were yelling yesterday. We were so well, close we to the phone. we think we have to yell to come to your house. Yeah, because you're not you're not here with us. So we so think we you can't yell. hear us, and so that's and we don't good. have to yell. Yeah. So anyway. So the goal today is don't yell. Don't yell. And we have some cool music playing in the background. We kind of got turned on to uh, Arctic Outpost Radio, 12 AM 1270. And it is, uh, they're spinning 78 records from above the 77th latitude. So uh, this is my eight tablespoons of room temp butter. It's, it's not, you know, you, you want it. Um, a little chill is good, but uh, you don't, because you don't want it too melted but I've got to be able to work this in. So I'm just sort of breaking these in half, okay? And just kind of spreading them out. I love doing breakfast and uh, making great biscuits is part of that. Yes, we're both fine, I'm good, you can hear us okay. That's all I needed to know. Like I said, we're trying not to yell. So you can see right there, I've got all that in there. Now you just gotta get in there and you have to work this with your hands. And so all I'm doing is I'm breaking up all this butter and shortening. This is what makes it flaky, by the way, that and the way you fold it. So I'm just working this in. We wanna break all this up until it gets to the texture of just like wet sand. That's really what we're going for, okay? So just kinda of working that up a little bit. How's my sausage doing back there, babe? Yeah, it's getting there. It's a getting there. Again, she, all she's doing is browning this sausage up, and then she's going to use a slotted spoon and pull it off and put it in a bowl, and, and we'll add that back to the gravy once the gravy's made, okay? And when I get into making a gravy, I'll talk to you more about why you do it that way versus not, okay? Okay, so I got the just about all worked in. I'm just kind of feeling around now to see if I have any big chunks of butter or shortening I didn't get. So, all right, so here's what you're looking for, okay? You want it to hold together like that, okay? Can you see that? It's just, just like wet sand, that's all it is. That's, that's all we're trying to go for. It breaks apart easy, okay? So, she's so good she knew I was about to ask her for my spoon. <laughs> She knew exactly what I needed. All right, then we have four cups of chilled buttermilk go in here. I might need a little bit more, might need a little bit more flour if it's too wet. But this dough, when you bring it together, will actually be kind of wet, all right? Um, we're not going for a super dry dough, so it's gonna be a little sticky. And so I'm just <clears throat> stirring this in together with a wooden spoon. And I'll show you, again, kind of the consistency I'm looking for. Again, it's going to be a little, little wet, so don't, uh, if it's wet, don't let that freak you out, because you're going to kind of dust this with flour too, so that'll kind of take care of the, the wetness. But if you're having trouble with your biscuits turning out a little, um, uh, like hockey pucks, okay, it could be that you're making the dough uh, too dry, or if it uh, also, if it flakes apart, you know, doesn't hold its shape and wants to fall apart, uh, again, that's a, you know, kind of a sign that you had it too dry. So we're just kind of stirring this up. I want to make sure I get all that dough wet. We made biscuits for my son's wedding weekend. And I made 115 biscuits. You should have seen that. They did not eat enough biscuits. They did not eat enough biscuits. We had uh, biscuits. We were giving people gallon bag, two gallon baggies of biscuits just to get them all gone. Okay, this is all getting pretty wet, Joyce. So I'm going to go ahead and, and dump this out. So I'm just going to get in here, put some flour down. Good morning, Tracy. Tracy watching? Yep. All right. 
Hashtag replay. All right, so I'm going to just sort of bring this together and turn it out. I need to get some flour in my hands. Both hands. So, can you all see that? Yeah, you're on the camera. I was one, one to check for sure. So, I'm just going to turn all this out. Okay. Put a little flour on top. Okay. And I want to bring all this together as much as I can into a disc. Okay. I'm just sort of pressing it down right now. Can you all see that? Now you don't want to overwork the dough. So about six or seven times is all I'm going to fold it, all right? So I'm going to kind of fold this over on this. There's one. You just sort of pat it out. There's two. This just helped me build up layers in the biscuit. There's three. Move it up here a little closer. Four. There's five. And we'll just go six. Okay? So I know by the feel of that, that's about where I want it. So now I'm just going to press it flat. It says, uh, Linda and Brad Green, good morning, good morning, y'all. Who else? Uh, Chris Allen's watching, morning, Chris. So now I just, I want to press this out to about one inch in height. And I just do it with my hands. You could totally use a rolling pin if you wanted to. Uh, but I'm going to try to kind of keep it in a disc shape at the same time. I'm doing a little tucking and shaping here. Okay. I'm going to press this out to about one inch in height. And when we cook these, they'll rise to about two to two and a quarter inches. I've got a 350 degree oven behind me. We're going to bake these for about 18 minutes. We've got a big batch. It might be 20, but we want them golden brown on top. So I've almost got this to my one inch size. So I'm just pressing this out. All right, that's about one inch. My favorite biscuit cutter. Tin can with a hole in it, okay? Get a little bit of this excess dough off my hands. The sausage is done, and I'm just taking it out of the pan with a slotted spoon, leaving all that grease in the pan. I should say goodness. It's not grease, it's goodness. Greasy goodness. And I'm yelling again. Don't yell. All right, so, got my cutter. You want to push straight down, don't twist. When you twist, you seal the edges of the biscuit and it, they won't rise as well. So if you just go straight down, it's another reason why you have that hole in the can. You all, I don't know if you can hear that or not, but you can hear the air escaping. Okay, so, see, about one inch thick. And I'm just putting, the, putting these on a cookie sheet, uh, edge to edge, and letting them touch. When you, I normally do them on a pizza stone because I, a single batch will fit on a pizza stone. I prefer the pizza stone because it, um, it'll get them nice and crispy on the bottom really well. So I mean, when you preheat that, uh, it really helps them out, okay? Uh, John and Diana A are watching this morning. Good to hear from you all. So anyway, just plopping out these biscuits, putting them edge to edge, again, on a cookie sheet. And I'll show you what that looks like. I don't think that's quite in camera yet, but that's okay. Well, I'll move the camera or have Joyce move it here shortly, but that's okay. They just need to see it before I put it in the oven. Okay. But we, we're feeding, how many people are we feeding this weekend, Joyce? 21. 21 people, so we're making enough biscuits, and there's other stuff too. Oh yeah, we're doing breakfast burritos. Um, yeah, tell them the menu. I made some green chili. 
Well, I might have to move it back some. The sun's shining. It's going to be glary off of this pan. Um, I don't know. I think we're doing breakfast burritos, green chili, homemade granola, jams and jellies. I don't know. We always eat well. We do. We have to carve up before the hike, you know. But don't put on the calories. All right, so once I get this first batch cut, now I'm going to reform my dough, but again, I don't want to work it too much because every time we work it, it makes it a little tougher, okay? Anybody have any other questions about biscuits this morning or struggles you have? <laughs> um, I can't read that, Joyce. Uh, it's turned down too far, I can't see it. Beth Madden's watching. Oh, hey Beth. So anyway, I just folded this over on top of itself a few times. And now we're just gonna begin press this out to about one inch. So I can't come get some? <laughs> uh, no. These are spoken for. We're not even eating any. I don't know, I might eat one, I'm hungry. He'll eat the dog biscuit, you'll yeah, see that at the end. Yeah, always have the dog biscuit. Some more going on here. Now, we have gone to uh, gotten to where we're making um, some gluten-free versions of this, where we use uh, Pillsbury gluten-free flour. It works great. Um, it's, it's the only one I've found that actually uh, acts and reacts like regular flour biscuits. And so we, we use it. The only thing I would tell you about it is you, you need to uh, pat it out a little bit thicker to where it's instead of down to an inch, maybe inch and a half, because they'll only rise about 50% as high as all purpose will. Okay? But from a texture standpoint and flakiness standpoint, you can use this exact recipe and replace it with the Pillsbury gluten-free flour and it will work out great, okay? Are you gonna do the gravy on the stove or up top? Uh, I can do it over here. Okay, now I'm making the dog biscuit. This is the little piece of scrap that was left. Um, <laughs> so I just sort of shape it into a biscuit shape and it ends up just being for the dog, since I don't have a dog, it's for me. All right, so. There's the biscuits. Okay. What's that say? Never made biscuits from scratch. Again, you make it look so easy. <laughs> it really is easy, uh, I, and I can't tell you, it's just super easy. Um, but I've also done it for a long time. So you just sort of get to where you just know practice. what you're doing. Yeah. Have fun practicing. Uh, probably the key things it's is, flour. is you, you want your dough still a little wet. Make sure it's not too, super duper dry. Um, Cause then it'll be crumbly, it won't hold together. Um, and then you don't want to work it too much. If you work it too much, then they get like hockey pucks. Okay. So you, those are the two things. Sure. Thanks. Those are the two things that you want to do. So. Uh, I'm going to stick these in the oven, 350 degrees. We're going to set a timer for 18 minutes because I think with a full uh, pan like this, it'll take that long. Uh, and then we'll take them out and uh, we'll put a little butter on top of them as soon as they come out. So. We're going to clean up and now we're going to show you the gravy. Joyce, let's rotate those at night. I'll set this thing here in a second. All right, so I've got the sausage all browned up. And I'm gonna clean off this counter. We're gonna put a stove up here and we're gonna show you how to do some gravy. Nine minutes, you're looking at it backwards. Nine minutes and then we're gonna rotate them, okay? Uh, get your pan. It might be hot. That's all right. Okay, so I hope you all see this. There's the pan. Okay, hi Janice, hi Kathy. So, got some. Now, I'll point it down in a minute. 
There's the, huh? I'll point it down. Okay, so there's a little bit of just little crumbles of sausage, that's totally okay. But now here's what we wanted you to take your sausage out. You're really not gonna know if you have a great thickness in your gravy if you're trying to make your gravy with the sausage still in the pan. I realize that's probably easier for y'all. You don't want a dirty dish, you just throw it in there. But if you really want a great consistency on the gravy, you want to get that most of that sausage out of there so that you can make the gravy. We're going to make a dark gravy, so we're going to make a great roux. We're going to cook that down so it's nice and dark. And then we're going to add the milk to it. And the milk, again, we want that scalded because you spent all that time making your roux nice and hot, and then you don't want to throw cold milk on it. I know a lot of you do it because I've seen you do it. So you don't want to throw cold milk on a hot roux. You want to throw hot milk on a hot roux, okay? And then uh, it'll come right back to a boil. You just keep whisking it. You'll see it get, it'll get nice and smooth and silky. And when you have it the perfect thickness that you want it, season it with salt and pepper. Now you know you get the seasoning right for the gravy as well. Then add the sausage back in there and let it warm the sausage through, okay? That's really how easy it is. All right, so uh, what have I got here, Joyce, about? Uh, Morning, three, Kathy Hall. Three quarter stick of butter. Yeah. Six tablespoons. Three quarter stick. That's okay, so I'm gonna put you back down to the pan. There you go. So I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna start this pan off on high just to get the butter melted. And then we will we'll reduce that, okay? So I've got um, six tablespoons of butter. I've got that little bit of excess uh, fat uh, from the sausage in there. We've got, um, let's see, we have 10 tablespoons for this batch, 10 tablespoons of all-purpose flour, and then six cups of whole milk that's been heated again. So and then I'll salt and pepper that to taste. I got my salt down here, but I need my pepper. But I love making gravy. I've been making it forever. Um, the secret to making great gravy is to first make a great roux. So uh, you see this is getting nice and bubbly. That's what I want. And I'm using my big wok here because, again, we're making a lot, of, a lot of gravy. we got a lot of folks to feed this week. So we're going to melt this gravy down. Once I get it nice and bubbly, I'm going to turn the heat down Hi, just Samson. a little bit. But I'm going to turn the heat down just a little. I still want it fairly hot, but I don't want to, I don't want to burn things. He's got 19 viewers. Hey, if you're watching this morning, say howdy. We had someone from Florida watch, Did we? Wa that watched. Um, well, Janice is watching. Yeah, but um, Janice is watching, but we had someone watch one of our other videos from Florida. All right. Oh, by the way, if you, if you uh, want to go back and re-watch this, um, we also, uh, I moved them over to our YouTube channel. We have a brand new YouTube channel. It's called the Pastor's Pantry Cooking School. And uh, yes, you have, so it's called He's the Pastor's, talking to it's you, called the Pastor's Pantry you. Cooking School on YouTube. Go out and subscribe to that. Hi, Beverly. And then you'll get uh, Hi, notices when we put new stuff out there, okay? Morning, so, Trish. So I've got, my butter's nice and bubbly. In fact, it's popping on me already. Amy, I wondered if you were watching this morning. So now I'm gonna turn this heat down a little bit. And we're just gonna stir this down. You might wanna put, put it back down on here so oh, you can yeah. see. They need to see the transition. Okay, so see it's kinda of lumpy. So we're gonna kinda of keep it down here a little bit so I can talk to y'all. All right, I'm just gonna keep stirring this. I'm gonna turn the heat down just a little bit more. It's still too hot. I got on medium heat. But we're gonna to continue to stir this. And it, it, you know, now that you can see it's getting thick, but eventually when we cook all the flour out, it'll, it'll get nice and smooth and silky. Okay. So I can see me in the camera with my apron on. So I went to, I have a story to tell you. I went to Deemer's yesterday and, to pick up some meat for tonight's class. And I wear this apron all the time and kind of forgot I had it on. So I went to Deemer's and I have this apron on and I'm walking through the store with the meat, um, going to check out. And I walk past this mature lady and as I'm passing her I hear her saying do you know where the stovetop stuffing is didn't realize till I got to the counter that she was talking to me I think she thought I worked there she, you had an apron on that's what I said I did have an, my so, apron on I kind of probably look like I so worked there so lady, if you're that, you lady, that lady I'm so sorry our deepest apology she does not work there and so she, it, it took I her have a minute, no idea where the stove it took her a minute to realize that you were talking to her so 
and we were talking about that. I get I get stopped in Lowe's all the time. I know places. why. And we I must guess, look like we know what we're I, doing. I don't know. I, I, well, I just figured it looks like the only place I could really work is a you know department store, I guess. So um, I must look like I know what I'm doing. All right, so you can see this gravy is starting to get browner, and we want to do that. So we want to get it to a nice deep brown. We don't want it to burn, but you can see how see how it went from that kind of chunky uh, stuff, and now it's kind of nice and smooth. So just keep whisking and just watch it. Don't walk away from it. This is not the time to take a phone call. Your phone rings, let it ring. Let them leave a message. It's probably a spam call anyway, telling you about your car, car warranty. warranty. Or one of those, please don't hang up. That's Seriously, I'm hanging doing. up. I'm still yelling. Quit yelling. I'm yelling. I'm don't always yell. tempted to go ahead and wait till someone gets on the phone and then say, I'm so glad you called. Can I, you got a minute for me to tell you about Jesus? <laughs> I need a note right here that says, do not yell. Do not yell. Don't yell. We'll just Don't talk. yell. It's just us. And 20, but I'm trying to get to their years, home. 19 viewers. I'm trying to be in their home. Kathy so, Hall thought I was in her home the other day. There you go. Yeah. Who's, who, who's <laughs> her house? So you can see how this has gotten nice and brown. I'm gonna let it go just a little bit more. Again, the we don't want to burn. Oh yeah, there's still steam coming off that milk. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, we just want that milk scalded, so just bring it to where it's got to boil around the edges and it's fine. You still want steaming. It? I don't yeah. know if you can see the steam, but it, yep, there it is. See, it's still steaming. So I'm gonna have Joyce add uh, about a cup of that here in just a minute. And then, uh, a little bit more after that, so be ready to follow up with me there. Does that help you? I don't know. I don't know. I'm close. Okay, I'm good. Let see how dark see, it look got. How dark that got. See how see what that is? Okay. okay so ready? she's gonna start it's gonna get crazy on me. See? A lot of steam. Keep going. Keep going. I'm trying not to make a mess. I got you. Because I would be the cleanup crew. Alright, you can add all of it now. Okay, here we go. So that was uh, six cups of whole milk. All right, so now I'm just gonna keep whisking it. And again, it's really not gonna be lumpy. It's gonna cream right out. I'm gonna season it with some salt. Did I really? I'm famous for doing that. No commercials here. I do that all the time. Okay, I'm gonna start it. I don't know if it's been nine minutes, but we'll know when they're done. Yes, yeah, so we lost track of whether that was in there nine minutes or not, so we just reset it, put it in for another nine, and then we'll check them. But trust, it's about 18 minutes is what, what, what you're gonna need. So now I've got all the lumps out of this gravy. So now I just got to bring it back to a boil, okay? And so once it comes, I got like medium heat. Once it comes to a boil is how you're gonna know how thick your gravy is. If it's too thin, add some more flour. If it's too thick, add some more milk. And you'll see it start to come together. You'll see it start to get nice and thick. I like to see if I can leave ribbons in it. If I, I know when I've, when I've left ribbons in it, it's perfect, but we're not quite back to a boil yet. <laughs> Angie says I'm fine. <laughs> I always put the number on the timer and forget to push start. I'm so glad you did it. I did it sometimes, you know. Contrary to popular belief, I am not perfect. I only walk on water on Thursdays. We got some cool music playing in the background right now on Arctic Outpost. I know you guys are drooling, aren't you? You want some of the. Some wait, of you, this. wait till you see the biscuits. We need to melt a little bit of butter. If you could melt me some butter, please. So, what are you guys having for breakfast? Yeah, that's a good question. What are you all eating for breakfast this morning? You probably already ate. We had a, we had a client come. I don't know, this it's morning, Saturday. So. They're probably just now getting moving.
That gravy's starting to thicken. That means it's just about back to a boil. Don't rush it. You want great gravy, you just gotta give it time. Well, we're waiting on biscuits anyway. Yeah, hand me a tablespoon so I can test the flavor. All right, I'm seeing some bubbles. Looky there, now, now it's getting thick. That's what we want. A banana. Kathy Hall had a banana, LOL, saving up for leftovers for lunch. <laughs> well, now I want biscuits and gravy, yeah? Kathy Hall, I'm probably gonna do something with an avocado. That's perfect. Okay, now I got all this boiling going on, so I definitely wanna turn it down now. All right, Joyce, now we can add all that sausage back in here. So now my gravy. Did you do that? Yeah. So see how thick that is? Okay, that's exactly what we want. So I've turned the heat down to low. Joyce is gonna add my sausage back in here, and I don't need my whisk anymore. You need to get yourself a wood spoon or something because yeah. you don't want to use this. Yeah. So, two pounds of sausage. And I don't want to leave any behind. I don't want any of it to feel left out. All right. So, now all you do is just stir that sausage back in there. Yep, avocados. I eat one a day, baked with an egg in the middle. We have not done that. Um, we still don't have an oven upstairs. That's why we're doing this down here today. Well, plus of the quantity. Doesn't that look great? Mm -mm 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 -mm. What do you think, guys? You think you can make uh, gravy, biscuits and gravy at home? Hey, if you do, quit yelling. If you do, if you make biscuits and gravy at home, share that out there with us. Yeah. Say, I tried Chef Sam's gravy recipe and it turned out good. Well, the biscuits. So, we make. Anyway. Did you tell them we make jalapeno cheese biscuits sometimes? No, but doesn't that look good? I mean, you just, who wouldn't want to put that over a biscuit and tell you what? That's just, that's just downright good. I tell you for sure. All right, good All right. stuff. So I'm the gravy is done. I'm gonna put it back up on you. Yep. Okay, so we're the, gonna take the gravy this back here and let it cool off so let we can cool get off. it in a container. We have to jar it up and we're gonna take it with us. So, hi cousin Debbie, love you dear heart. Glad you're watching too. So you got a few minutes to chat with them. I'll check you out. So this yeah, in a minute. so what are your breakfast questions? I do breakfast eight ways a Sunday, man. I'm telling you what, if you have a breakfast question, let me know. We're waiting for these biscuits to get done. Um, but kind of share, or maybe you have a great uh, breath, breakfast recipe you want to share, okay? All right, Linda, good. You're glad you're, she's going to try and make stuff tomorrow. That's great. Hey, post some pics out there. We like good food porn. Post some pics out there and uh, let us see what you made, and, and we'll brag on you, okay? We love to do that. So, but, yeah, if you have any uh, breakfast uh, questions or comments, uh, good time to ask. Um, I make eggs every way you can make them. Um, you know, every, cottage fries and quiches and frittatas and um, Belgian waffles and crepes and pancakes and I just, you know, bacons and sausage and candied bacons and I do all kinds of breakfast stuff. I love to do it. So, um, if you have some breakfast questions, let us know. Um, again, reminder for some of you that are new, um, we do this in the kitchen episode just periodically. Um, it's unscripted, um, I mean, other than the fact we usually know what we're making, but not always. Um, bacon, uh, baked avocados with egg, you'll love it. I'm going to try that. And parm on top, I absolutely will try that because, uh, again, we do love uh, avocados. Uh, the question on the avocado, do you take it out of the skin before you bake no. it? No. No? Joyce says no. Um, I know that. I've seen it. I've been wanting to try that. Okay. Yeah, she has really become an avocado lover, and I love them too. But, I mean, she's getting me to where I do that on a regular basis. Do we do bacon in the oven? Yes, quite often we do bacon in the oven. It's a little neater and easier, but I was getting ready to say we do it on air fryer quite a bit. Okay. Um, did we use, we use um, 
fresh, or not, I shouldn't say, it, store bought. It was a one pound package of sausage from the store. It wasn't frozen though. Okay. The sausage we used for today? Yeah. It was Bob Evans original. Bob Evans original, Joyce says. So that hopefully that answers your question, Rick. Um, but yeah, we've got um, sometimes some really good deals on meat we get from some local farmers. And so sometimes we'll have it straight from the farm, other times we have it from the store. So this was just a store bought thing. But, um, Anyway, if you have um, some, some comments on uh, breakfast and different foods and you know, questions, let me know um, so we can deal with that while we're just waiting on our biscuits. We're melting some butter. I want to um, just brush those with butter as soon as they come out. But, uh, yeah, I love doing breakfast for dinner. Uh, that's a big deal for us, too. Uh, and almost every morning, um, we do something pretty easy with, uh, you know, like an English muffin with uh, maybe, well, like the other day, we had English muffin and avocado and homegrown tomatoes with an egg on top and some green chili. You know, that, so that's kind of the stuff. That's usually the way we eat, but this is, um, again, when we filmed these, um, that's what I was saying earlier, when we filmed these, it's just unscripted. Um, we just uh, sort of turned the camera on because we're uh, able to cook for ourselves. And uh, we just let you all in on the conversation and kind of what goes on. And we're just trying to show you easy stuff. And, you know, we get asked all the time, do you guys eat, you know, fancy like that all the time? And I wouldn't say we always eat fancy, but we always eat well. I mean, again, we're all about stewardship and food is a gift. So we always want to treat the food well and make sure we prepare it well. Um, we just very rarely just throw something together. I mean, even if we're doing nachos, um, you know, and what we call garbage nachos, which is clean the fridge out nachos. Uh, we still want to make it look pretty before we eat it. I mean, I just cannot, I can't put an ugly plate of food in front of me and, and want to eat it. So. So we've got a breakfast for dinner class coming up. Um, the appetizer for that is deviled eggs benedict, um, avocado eggs with to uh, deviled eggs with toast points. Check your uh, okay. biscuits. Um, we will do some casseroles and also, yes, we do hash brown potatoes and cottage fries. Yeah. Um, and then the entree for that class is chicken and biscuits with gravy on it. Um, I don't remember what the sides are. And then for dessert, you want to come just for dessert, is candied bacon creme brulee. Um, it's going to be the best. Okay, so Don Rose says, I grew up with my mom making scrambled eggs and using milk to thin them out. And then I had a home ec teacher say to use water for light and fluffy eggs. What do you use? We just uh, use the eggs. We yeah. don't. Yeah, I don't. I say if we did anything, we'd use milk. I've used milk before. Yeah. I've used the mayonnaise before. Um, someone told me the other day they use sour cream. I think all of those would work. Um, typically, I just do straight eggs when I'm doing mine. Uh, the key to having them light and fluffy is to stop cooking them. <laughs> I, it really is. Uh, you want to cook them up, um, and, and, and I don't play with them too much. I really, I'll let them kind of get nice and fried on the bottom. And then um, as it's frying, I'll, I'll tear holes in the, in the bottom of the pan so that um, some more can fry up. And as, once it starts coming together, I'll sort of pull it back in from the edges and let it run out to the edges. And then I'll just turn it like one time uh, and just kind of toss around the pan and I take it right out. So um, for me, that's the key to making them light and fluffy, okay? So hopefully that answers your question. But you can. You can add things like that. I don't know that that necessarily makes it light and fluffy. It, I think the key really is not to overcook them. If you just cook eggs too long, they just get hard and rubbery. Uh, that's the bottom line. Uh, so, but you can add other things to it, which I think sometimes will link, you know, um, lengthen how much egg you have if you're trying to stretch it a little bit. You know, so you can add some of those, those fillers. So hopefully that answers your question. But I, in a, I put the... Um, I put the biscuits back in for a few more minutes because we didn't set the timer on the front half. So it really hadn't been in nine minutes. I got it in there for a few more minutes um, cooking up. So uh, we'll get there soon. Bear, bear with me, okay? But we can still talk breakfast. Uh, we were talking about hash browns. Rick asked about hash browns. Um, when, when we're talking hash browns, um, the way I really like to do hash browns is to take, if we've had baked potatoes that we've made several of, is I'll bake a couple extra potatoes um, in the oven. And then what I'll do is I'll grate the baked potato. Okay? Uh, and that's how I'll make hash browns. Okay? I'll put a little bit of butter, maybe a little bit of oil in the pan. Uh, I'll put the hash browns then in there. And again, I'll try to get them all nice and level in the pan. 
let them get good and crisp on one side, and then I'll just take the, the pan and just flip it and just roll them over uh, one more time and then kind of press them flat again. And I'll start letting them get crispy on that side, and that's when I'll season with salt and pepper, a little bit of green onion, maybe some minced jalapeno uh, mixed on top of that. Uh, sometimes I'll put some cheddar cheese on top too. I like cheese on it. Um, but it's a great way to kind of repurpose baked potatoes you had left over. Uh, but I also it kind of it precooks those hash browns, so you're not you're not trying to grate a hard potato. You're actually grating a nice soft one, so they work out real well. Um, so that's what I do when I'm doing hash browns. Um, sometimes I'll even add meat. So if I have some sausage, I'll throw that in there with them. You know, just kind of depends. Just, you know, what do we have? Bacon, sausage. I'll throw that in there, um, just to add some extra flavor. Um, but uh, a lot of times we'll, uh, we'll do cottage potatoes, and the cottage potatoes are usually um, whole uncooked potatoes. Um, I'll just dice those up, use a quarter inch dice so I can get them hot all the way through. Um, and I just kind of just get them good and brown in the pan, and then I start to turn them over. Um, and again, I'll, I'll usually top those with some green onion or some jalapeno. Um, I like cottage fries best. Joyce, Joyce is a cottage, so yeah, she likes cottage fries. Um, well, I like them both. They just, yeah, they're little square, crunchy goodness. Yeah. Well, and I'll do, we'll do, um, we talked about, uh, Angie mentioned casseroles earlier. Uh, we've done casseroles where hash browns were the base for the casserole. Um, so we'll make those up and then press those in the bottom of the baking dish and then add eggs and cheese and vegetables and we don't do stuff. a lot of casseroles because it's just the two of us. Yeah. So, but we've done some for, you know, we're entertaining several people sometimes. Yeah. We'll do, like we're doing a brunch and having people come over. Casseroles work great. Um, also, the thing with casseroles, you know, if, even if you're just doing it for two, if you're not making a big baking dish of it, um, you can have them for a couple mornings in a row. Oh, tell them about our brunch eggs and our whoopie pans. Oh, okay. So, yeah. When we do a brunch and we need, you need to make a whole bunch of eggs, people um, we bought a thing is that on our website on gear tab okay so it's probably not out there um, yeah it's what everyone, everyone says they want Joyce to clean up behind me everyone asks for that for the right price I'll come over yeah <laughs> so anyway the whoopie pans are really shallow okay yeah. really shallow uh, but you can get one whole large egg or even scrambled egg you can kind of just break up an egg and pour it in there so if you want to do uh, scrambled eggs like for an egg sandwich or if you just want to do some fried eggs, um, you're going to just crack one, put them inside that. You, do we, we spray that, right? Yes. Spray that with some cooking spray. Put the egg down in there. Uh, in the oven, uh, 350 for about 8 to 12 minutes, depending on how much you need them done. Um, and then they, they come right out. And so now you have these nice sunny side up eggs that are cooked. And uh, you can feed a whole lot of people, make a whole lot of eggs at one time. So we've done that and actually had it to where it's like, you know, we make 24 eggs in 12 minutes, which is pretty awesome. I'm going to check those biscuits again real quick. Hopefully they're a little closer to being done now. Oh my gosh, they have uh, puffed up. They have puffed up. They're, they're not quite they're not quite. Need, they need a few more minutes. I messed up when I didn't set that timer. Did I? I know. But they're getting there. They're starting to brown. So we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. Um, but yeah, try whoopie pans out. Um, what else have we used in the whoopie pans? Um, oh, the parm it. chips. We've done parm oh, chips the parm in there. Chips, yeah. yeah. If you like Parmesan chips, um, you take a tablespoon of freshly grated Parmesan. Use the real stuff. Don't use the stuff in the shaker. It will not work as well. Uh, but do about a tablespoon of uh, Parmesan in each of those. Again, spray it. No, you don't spray it for the chips because they no, cut their own oil. Got so. But spread them out in there, and you make these nice little Parmesan chips that are just delicious. And that's a great way to serve as a little side or a garnish and some soups uh, along the side. They're delicious to eat, um, so give that a try, too. Whoopie pans are good for a lot of stuff, okay? So Joyce is stirring my gravy. Kind of cool it off. Kind of cool so it off it so we can store I'm hoping she saves me a little bit for breakfast, just a little bit. So. For that dog biscuit? Yeah, for that dog biscuit. Save me enough for the dog biscuit. A spoonful. A spoonful of gravy, please. That'd be great. So, oh, he's such a baker. So, all right. What else? What else? Joyce, what are you doing? I'm cleaning. It's what I do. As always. So, all right. So, we got to, again, uh, I want to encourage you all to, uh, to tune in and uh, get sign up for notifications um, for uh, the pastor's pantry. So, that way, when we go online, you'll get a little pop-up window. It will pop up down on your Facebook page. Um, saying that we're live and you can zip right over here and catch us. So uh, 
Yeah, Linda, definitely get you some of those. Um, what are you calling that? It's a whoopie pan, W-H-O-O-P-I-E for like, like making whoopie pie? pies. So it's a whoopie pan. And we just ordered them on Amazon and got them in. So um, they're, they're easy to get. I'll usually get we, them added to our yeah, website. Yeah, we, usually, we sure have a gear tab things. on the website. This, a lot of the cool We've stuff we use. Um, we, we put stuff out there in the gear tab because people ask us again, where'd you get that? How do I get it? And what we do is we put a link to Amazon so you can go right there and get what we get. If you send us a message to our inbox um, on Facebook and Messenger to remind me, I will send you the link for that or I'll try and remember to put the link out here on this post when we're all done. We're, I have a horrible we're, we're memory. We're here for so you. you know, we want to help you all cook. I just need to be reminded. Be good stewards of the food you've been given. So. Um, we've got a, a, a wonderful a class we're prepping for today. Uh, so we're, we're going to be cooking all day once we get this out of the way. So we're going to do this, and, and I've got a whole bunch of other stuff I'm going to cook. So I'll be in the kitchen all day long. Um, hey, you got to set the timer. I didn't you want a timer. you got to push start. I didn't want a timer. I'm just waiting. Oh, it's like it's in five minutes. No, it's not it's doing anything. anything. <laughs> you know. Didn't want to start the timer. I'm just giving it a few more minutes, and we're okay. going to check it out. As long as they're golden brown, we'll bring them out. We'll I'm butter them up. I'm like, oh no, we did it again. No, I didn't do it. I'm just kind of, kind of waiting to get all that done. So, okay, your butter's ready. Good. That's what I need. Now, um, speaking of the butter, we like that. This isn't clarified. It could could be, no. but it's not. Um, we like to use clarified butter more times than not. And clarified butter, uh, you can buy it in the store. It's called ghee. G H E E. Um, it's about 11 bucks a jar or for about 25 cents you can make your own, your choice. Uh, what you want to do is take a stick or two of butter, put it in a small pot, put it over a really low heat. So if you have a gas stove like we do, you can put it over the pilot light and that's sufficient. If you have an electric stove, most of the stoves have a little warming burner. So just put it on low, put the pot over that, put a lid over it, walk away. Okay. You don't want to bring the butter to a boil. You just want it to melt slowly. And what will happen is, is that the clear butter, the clarified butter, will rise to the top and all the milk fats and solids will all sink to the bottom. And so what you do is you very slowly pour off, we just use a glass measuring cup for hours, we just pour off the clear stuff and keep that, and once we get all the clear stuff poured off, we just do that slowly and then you throw away all the milk fat. That's going to do a couple of different things, it's going to make that butter a little healthier, it's got a little less fat in it, but you get all the flavor. Uh, but also, if you fry with it and cook with it, it doesn't pop and you know do all that stuff and bubble all over the place. Because when you get that popping with butter in a skillet, it's the milk fats and milk solids that are in there that's popping. Okay, so if you get rid of that, you'll have a whole lot less of that. You're just going to have a nice hot butter that you can cook with. Okay, so make your own clarified butter. We usually always have a pot of it on the stove. Uh, we make it almost every single day. Uh, so we'll take just take a stick or two of butter put in there and then I just use it for cooking throughout the day, whatever I'm doing. So I like cooking with butter a lot. Check them? Yep, let's check them, see if they're ready. I think we still need a couple more minutes. Wow, sorry guys. I'll try to heat it. So they still need a couple more minutes. Yeah, I messed it all up when I we didn't set the timer, so anyway, so what else do we want to talk about today? Um I'm just cooking a lot. That's it. Hand me coffee. I haven't had much coffee today, so that's it. I'm not. I'm not as high energy, and I'm not yelling at you. I'm not as we high energy. We need a new salsa that will soon maybe be oh, on the market. Oh, you have a jar of that handy? I do. I do. I have a brand new salsa um, that'll be on the market real soon. It's our tomatilla salsa. Okay, um, this is phenomenal. It's we so a good. Limit, very limited supply. Very limited supply. If we bay, we may. Uh, yeah. So, tomatilla salsa, delish. Unbelievable. You want to just get a bag of chips and pour it all over that, okay? Um, so. You start talking about classes oh, the, coming up. Yeah, well, the, uh, I'm doing the class today. It's a private, we're doing a private class. Uh, Mexican yes. cornbread recipes. There's cornbread yes. recipes, jalapeno cornbread on our website. Yeah, you want what you want to look at, look for my Southwestern cornbread recipe. Just okay? type That's, cornbread, you should, yeah, you it, call, it should it's come out up. There, but if it's, not, send us a message, yeah. I'll send it to you but it's my, South, my Southwestern cornbread is what that is, okay? So anyway, the tomatilla salsa, uh, we've been wanting to make it. I've been making it in like little tiny small batches for us and for friends. Um, the, the issue has been finding enough tomatillos uh, to make a whole batch of it because it has a lot and it's got avocado in it and cilantro and a bunch of other good stuff. So we finally found a source 
for the tomatillos. And so now we can get plenty of those. And uh, so now I can make it. Ta da! Okay, so, and then for classes coming up, um, having some coffee. We only have classes posted out through September 10th. We have really held back doing classes because again, you just don't know what's happening on a daily basis. Are they gonna let you gather or not gather? So crazy. as soon, we will probably post a few more classes um, after Labor Day. Um, we'll get some classes posted for September and October. Well, again, but another reminder is like, we'll always do private classes. Yes. Okay. So if, oh, you only need eight. Yeah, as long as you have at least eight. To do a eight. private class, six get, to eight. We'll work with you a little yeah. bit on that. Six to eight, um, and you get to pick the menu. So you get to have food that you want. Um, you don't have to eat what we do, and we'll work with you. Classes start at thirty dollars per person, and, and go up from there depending upon the menu. Um, so yeah, we're we're willing to uh, always do a private class. Yeah. So. Now, if you want to do something fancy, of course we have our Chef's Choice class. Um, Chef's Choice, um, I don't know why they're here. Um, Chef's Choice, they're not. I think he's doing a U-turn. Spectrum pulled up in the parking lot, he's doing a U-turn. Um, but Chef's Choice class is uh, 75 bucks a person, but it's seven courses and you only need four people. So, the, and the cool thing about Chef's Choice is um, if you're doing it as a private party, we just want you to give us a cuisine or a theme, okay? But not being you don't have to, I'm going to do all the menu and it's, every course is going to be a surprise to you. Okay. Um, and that's part of the fun of it. Cause you, you know, all you're going to know is the theme. Like, let's say you want to do, um, you want to do a seven course, uh, Brazilian meal. Okay. That's all you're going to know. It's going to be all Brazilian foods or you want to do a seven course, um, uh, taste of Florida. So, you know, there's going to be a lot of seafood. There's going to be a lot of citrus, um, maybe a couple other cool things. But that's about all you're going to know. Uh, and then I surprise you because as we bring out each course, and this is where I do all my fancy stuff. I'm doing plan bays. I'm doing food art and architecture. Um, all all the, the really fancy platings, all those kinds of things. So Chef's Choice is a great way to get that. Then we have a Chef's Choice teaser um, where it's five courses for 60 bucks. We let six people in. Hi, Becky. Um, you know, we have talked about trying to do a class where it was all desserts. And one of the issues with that oh, yeah. is timing, okay? Uh, because so much of that stuff has to have uh, time to bake or cook. And so it's really hard to get that done within a two-hour time period. Um, but we, we've talked about that. We've had other people ask that, all desserts. Um, so, you know, just one of those things would, you know, we'd have to find the, you know, the right three desserts and, you know, we have to fig figure out what had to be pre-made, but we could still teach it so that you all knew what well, we were doing. more than three desserts, it'd probably be five to six. Five to six desserts. Because you'd have appetizer, wow. entree imagine? with sides, and dessert. You guys would be sugar high. Yeah, we would, we would, blow well, not, see, I like to do a lot of savory dessert. Joyce is more the sweet tooth dessert person, and I'm more the savory dessert person, so. Um, yeah, girls' night, it's, we, we, we had a lot of, a lot of girls, nights. a lot of ladies nights, man. I even wore a kind of a black and pink apron with sparkles one night. We can do it all pink. We've done, th <laughs> we've done the red hat ladies. Yeah. We've done a lot of private classes for the ladies. So yeah, even though we don't always have public classes Sunday out there with COVID. classes. It's a great yeah. night out. There's no rush. It's right. not like going to a restaurant, so you don't have to rush through it. You're the only people we're serving that night. Um, yeah. It's very relaxed, very casual. A lot of fun. So, all right, let's check those biscuits. I think they're probably done by now. I totally messed up the time. So it probably took us about 18 to 20 minutes. All right. Point it down. There's the biscuits. There's your butter. Okay. Do I have a tape measure? Uh, there's a ruler right here. All right. Ruler. Okay, so these are right at two inches tall. Two inches, okay? So, nice and brown. Hit them a little butter. Now, you can butter them before they go in, too, and that'll actually brown them up a little bit better. You missed the dog biscuit. I'm saving that one for okay. last. I want to make sure I got enough for all these, okay? Yeah, I didn't make you very much. 
Yeah, we just have a little bit of butter. Would you use half a stick of butter here? Uh, I don't even think that. Three tablespoons, maybe. So brush them with a little butter, let them cool off a little bit, and then they will be ready. I do have a little bit more for my dog biscuit over there. Okay. There's our biscuits. So what do you think? Think you guys can make biscuits? You gonna crack open the dog biscuit? Yeah. It's hot. It's gonna be hot. Ouch, ouch, ouch. It is a little warm. All right. He's gonna tease you guys. Linda said, Linda and uh, Brad Green said they're gonna give it a try. See, hold on a minute, there's more to come. What are you doing? Oh, he's still in the gravy now. Got it. Here he comes, he's gonna tease you guys. Let me put it back up here on his face. Biscuits and gravy, breakfast of champions. Mm. Mm. Man. Is it so good? Mm. Nice. Want a bite? Uh, it's probably hot, isn't it? A little bit. Listen, y'all. If you have any problems making biscuits, you can always just send us an email as well. Okay? Patterfamesauce at yahoo.com. Send us an email or a messenger. Um, I get people in food distress all the time. So I'm trying to make this and I don't know what I'm going to do. So if I'm available and I can get your message, I will answer you, okay? I'll try to help you out. So feel free to do that. Um, so whenever and wherever you're making breakfast, always make it great. Um, it is, um, what did I hear the other day? It's the, it's the meal of opportunity, okay? Because your whole day is in front of you. Sorry, that took so, so long. This so breakfast is the meal of opportunity. So enjoy your breakfast together. Always make it special and, um, and make it fun, okay? Get the kids involved. If you've got kids around or grandkids around, Get them involved and uh, just have fun with breakfast. Okay? I'm sorry it was so long. That yeah, it took a while. Hour. We normally don't like to do a whole Yeah, hour. we usually do like 30 minutes yeah. um, or less. Sorry. So, but it took a while. We had to put everything together. But we wanted you to be part of it today. And welcome to our kitchen. So, All right, listen, y'all. Uh, appreciate all of your hanging tough and sticking with us uh, through this long episode today. Uh, I'll post it out on YouTube later um, if you want to go back and rewatch it or you can watch it here on Facebook. Uh, but God bless y'all. Love you. We'll see you soon. Bye.